Hi, in this recording we're going to be looking at the series circuit worksheet. Okay, and quick reminder, in series circuits there are three main things we have to remember, and these you can find all in your reference table. And remember, the key thing about series circuit is that I total is equal to I1, which is equal to I2, which is equal to I3, which means that basically the current is always the same in series. So it doesn't matter if you are going through uh, the first resistor, second resistor, no resistors, the current has to be the exact same when you're in series. The other thing is that the voltages have to add up. And so the total voltage you get by going across the battery has to equal whatever voltage drop across the first, plus whatever voltage drop you get across the second, plus whatever voltage drop you get across the third. Okay, and going through those. So well, that's a dot, 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 by the way. So this is based off the law of conservation of energy, that whatever energy you gain by going across the battery, you're going to have to lose in going through the resistors. Okay, and then the last one is that the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistances themselves. So R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dot, 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 if there's more. And this is based off of the fact that a resistor is directly proportional to the length. And so every time you add a resistor in series, you're essentially making the total resistance longer. So if we look at our first one here, we want to find out the total resistance. We want to find the total current and then the voltage drop across each resistor. <clears throat> So if I write down everything I know, I have that my total voltage is equal to 15 volts because that's my only voltage source inside that, inside that circuit. Now, I'm going to label this. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to call this R1. I'm going to call this R2. And I'm going to call this R3. So if I go over here, R1 is going to equal 7 ohms. R2 is going to equal 15 ohms and R3 is going to equal a whopping 23 ohms. And so that's everything they give us. So the first thing you have to find out is the total resistance. So because they're in series, our total resistance, we'll keep this in blue, is going to equal R1 plus R2 plus R3. And so in this case, that's going to be 7 ohms plus 15 ohms plus the 23 ohms, which will give us a total when added all up, will give us 45 ohms. The next thing is we want to find total current. Now the key thing to remember, we're going to still use ohms all here, that I is equal to V over R. The current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And the key thing to remember in doing all these problems is that your subscripts have to be the same. And since I want I total, I'm going to have to use V total and I'm going to have to divide it by R total. Well, conveniently, V total, that's that 15 volts. My R total, that's my 45 ohms just found. And so when I divide those, I'm going to get 0 0.33 amps, or if you want to do exact one third of an amp. Okay, so that'll give me my total resistance. The last thing that I want us to find is what is the voltage drop, or how much voltage does it take to go across that resistor? How much energy per charge does it take? And so in that case, if I want to find V1, what I would have to do, and I'm just going to rewrite this because I is equal to V over R, V is equal to I times R, so just cross multiply. So V1 will equal I1 times R1. Now you're like, oh, but wait, what's I1? Well, remember, once we know I total, and I'll highlight this, I total is the same for all of them. So once we know that I total is that 0.33 amps, now we know that I1 is also 0.33 amps. And I'm going to multiply that by the resistance of 7 ohms. So it's going to give me 2.33 volts. My second voltage is going to equal I2 times R2. So I2 <clears throat> is the same because it's in series, 0.33 amps. Multiply that by my 15 ohms, which is going to give me now 5 volts. And lastly, V3 is going to be I3 times R3. So the 0.33 amps again, because it's in series, times the 23 ohms which is going to give me 7.67 volts. Now the other cool thing here, and I'll just kind of just circle this right here, if I add up all of these, V1 plus V2 plus V3, that's going to give me 15 volts, which is exactly equal to what our equation said over here, <clears throat> that the total voltage should equal the sum of the individuals. Okay, so now using the exact same thing, and I'm not going to do all the workout, and you should be able to see it, I'm just going to kind of walk my way through it. Um, once I know that the total voltage on part B, is going to equal my 10 volts. And then again, I'm going to label this R1, 
I'm going to label this R2. It doesn't really matter if you do that or not. Um, I like to, just that way I have some semblance, and when I go through and find I1 or V1, I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to find call that R1 is going to be 17 ohms, and that R2 is going to be 20 ohms. So in this case, I want to find out my total resistance, so we'll put that back in blue. So I mean, uh, let me put a nice big old line to, uh, here to divide it up. So if I'm going to put this back in blue, so R total, in this case, this is going to be R1 plus R2. I don't need the R3 here because I only have two resistances. So I've got 17 plus 20, 17 ohms plus 20 ohms will give me 37 ohms as my total resistance. My I total, oop, got to change colors. My I total is just going to equal V total over R total, keeping my subscripts the same. So my V total, that was my 10 volts. My R total I just found was 37 ohms. And so when I put that together, I end up getting a total current of 0 0.27 amps. Now I rounded a little bit, so you may get something slightly different, but I, I went to that. Now they want me to find V1 and V2. So V1 is equal to I1 times R1. So I took my 0.27 amps, because when I'm in a series, I1 is I total times my total resistance, or sorry, my 17 ohm resistor, because that's R1, and that's going to give me 4.6 volts, 4.9, I rather that 4.6. And then V2 is just going to be I2 times R2. So the 0.27 amps times my 20 ohms, which gives me 5.4 volts. Okay, and so those are my answers. And again, if I added those up, that would give me a 10 again. Now, in number two, they want to know how much power will be dissipated, how much power is going to be used up when going through the circled resistor. Okay, in order to find power, we've talked about this before, power in a circuit, oops, that's an R, power is equal to V times I. Okay, that means I would have to know the voltage and the current going across. But there's another way too, it's also equal to I squared times R. Or it's equal to V squared over R. I can use any one of these. Now, what I'm going to use personally is that I'm going to use my I squared times R because it's going to be very easy for me to find out what the current is and I already know what the resistance is. So I'm going to use part A here and I'm going to write down everything I know. I know that my total voltage is equal to 20 volts. I know that R1, and we'll label all these again, R1, R2, R3. So, oops, there you go, there's three. So my R1 is going to be 20 ohms. My R2 is going to be 15 ohms. And my R3 is going to be 3 ohms. And so to find out my total resistance, now my goal here is I want to find out because I want to know the power in the 15, the P in the 15 ohm. I'm going to want to find the current in the 15, square it, and then multiply that by the resistance of the 15. Now this is not the only way I could have done it. I could have also gone and find the current going through the 15 and the voltage across 15 and done it that way. Or I could have found the voltage across 15 uh, and divided by the resistance of 15. But no, if you use the V squared over R, that V is not going to be 20. 20 is the total voltage, not the voltage across 15. So I chose this way because this seemed easiest to me. So what I did, I got to find the current flowing through the, through the 15 ohm resistor. Well, in order to find that, I essentially need to find I total because I total will equal the I15. But before I can find I total, I'm gonna take V total and divide it by R total. So before I can find my I15, I need to find I total. Before I need to find I total, I need to find R total. So you can see it's step by step by step. But I'm gonna go find my total resistance first. So total resistance, let me put this down just a touch. My total resistance, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that's going to equal 20 ohms plus 15 ohms plus 3 ohms. So my R total, I'll slide this over just a touch, is 38 ohms. Now I can find my I total, I'll put this back in orange. I total is equal to V total over R total. So my V total, that's 20 volts, divide that by my R total of 38 ohms, and that's going to give me a total current of 0.53 amps. 
Now, I know that I total, because it's in series, has to equal, or sorry, I15 has to equal I total. So I can go back to my original equation. I'm going to put this on purple. Actually, I'm going to circle this and change it to the maroon, because that's a cooler color for me. So that is going to equal 0 0.53 amps. Don't forget to square it. Times my 15 ohms. And that'll give me a power of 4.2 watts. That's how much power is being dissipated, how much energy per second is being given off in that resistor. And now we look at our last one, part B here. Let's see if I can slide it up just a touch. Again, same kind of thing. I'm going to start off with what I know. So I've got my V total is equal to 5 volts. I've got my R1 is going to be 17 ohms. My R2 is equal to 20 ohms. So this is going to be R1, this is going to be R2. And so once again, if I want to find power in the 17, so I'll put this down here, I'll go back to maroon. Power in the 17, I need to know the current in the 17 squared times the resistance. So before I can find out the current in the 17, so I17, that's going to equal I total. Oops, wrong color. Badge. I17 is going to be equal to I total which we know is going to equal V total over R total. And I know it gets confusing with me while I'm saying all of this and the fact, but it's again, you have to remember, subscripts are important. If I want to find I total, use total voltage, total resistance. If I want to find power in the 17, I use current in the 17 times the resistance of the 17. Okay, I can't mix and match. So before I can find I total, I need to find R total. So going back to the blue, R total, is just equal to R1 plus R2 in this case. So this will give me 17 ohms plus 20 ohms. So whopping 37 ohms. So I take my V total, go back here in orange. V total was 5 volts divided by my 37 ohms. So my I total is going to be 0.135 amps. So that becomes I17. Change to maroon again. So the power dissipated, power given off from the 17 ohm resistor is 0.135 amps. Don't forget to square it. Times the 17 ohms. And that's going to equal now 0.31 watts. Now I could have very easily also have gone and said, all right, well, I'm going to find V1. V1 is equal to I1 times R1. Okay, and when I do that, hang on, let me grab my calculator really quick. And so when I took the 0 0.135, 0 0.135, and I multiplied that by my 17, that's going to give me 2.3, basically. So 0.135 amps times the 17 ohms will give me 2.3 volts. And then I could have gone power is equal to I, so power in the 17 equals I in the 17 times the voltage of the 17. And so for that, I could have gone 0.135 amps times 2.3 volts. And so I go and multiply that times 0.135, and I'm going to get 0 0.31 watts again. So it doesn't matter the way I did it. I end up getting the exact same thing. So I hope this helps. And uh, if you have any questions, come see me. All right. Everybody have a great night. See you later. Bye.